basic video on changing the tire right end and Chevy Cobalt Pontiac G5. Actually, it's all the same for most every car out there. First of all, jack the car up securely. Um, make sure you have a jack stand or some boards underneath in case it falls. You can also just stick the wheel down there. And a quick way to tell if the tire right end is bent, you would shake or loose, you would shake the wheel with the tire on and see if it moves. A lot of play in there. Symptoms of this was the car when you were on the left side of the wheel had the wheel towards the left there was a lot of play so you couldn't move it a lot in the left position without a lot of play this one is move it's really tight it's hard to move by hand so we're gonna replace it with that move has greasable thing it's got some type of problem solver gives you more grease room lifetime warranty it was about 30 ish dollars with my discount online there's the part number tools you need to do this are very simple uh, tie rod tool or ball joint tool. You can get away with this if you don't. Tie rods are smaller, so you got a smaller thing. This is actually a heavy duty one I've had forever. Cheap ones at Harbor Freight will just break off and you have to keep grinding them. This one never has. A good hammer and 19 millimeter or three quarter inch um, ratchet. And then like an adjustable wrench, depends on what size this is. So this one doesn't have no tire, no nut at the bottom. I mean, it's got nut at the bottom, but it doesn't have that uh, cotter pin. So we can just loosen it. Let me pause it while we loosen it. So this one I've already had loosened off because I was working on it, seeing what's wrong. If you can ever have a problem spinning the nut, sometimes these shafts have a hex head on them so you can hold them. There's a little hex head. If you look real close, you'll see it. The move doesn't. But also you can use you can push up on it with a tie rod tool. It's called a separator. And if you push pressure on it with the nuts on, that'll make the shaft tight so you can do it. And then you're just gonna take a hammer to this tool hammered in there and it's gonna split it open. This as we previously split it open, it came out real easy. There is the issue. It's wobbling with one finger. The other one you see I could barely do with one hand. And there's no grease fitting in here. The inner you can kind of tell by it moving it, popping it in and out. It isn't going. If you have to replace the inner, there's a big um, long deep skinny socket you put in there. You'd have to take the rubber off the rubber clamp a little bit to get to there. Um, now this one you're going to loosen these two nuts. Barely move that one as much, as least as possible. This, the Moog has a different size, so I'm just going to use the adjustable wrench for both of them. Break them loose. And then the big important thing is to count how many turns you take it out. So you can put it back in the same amount of turns. But easy, if you, you don't move this nut much, you can put it right back there. Because this will keep your alignment straight. So we're going to break them loose and get it off. And what I did is just put it back in place a little bit. Just hammered on the outside one since they're locked together with the wrench. And now we got turned just a little bit. So now we can move the tie rod in. See it's moving. And we'll count the number of turns we turn it. There is one complete turn. Two complete turns. So we got 13 turns out of it and I had to, this has got a hex head so you can put on there to tight to loosen it there to hold it where you're loosening it and so the original one just all wobbly and the new one we put grease in the thread so it'll come off this one's kind of seized on and just count the number of turns but it should go back the same way because i barely moved that nut so that's pretty much it let me pause it we finish then once you get it up to there since i moved it we'll put it right here and then you just tighten these two together, you're done. So we just tighten one to the other. And so as long as you didn't have to move the outside nut, or the inside nut too much, you can just thread it right up to there. And so we barely turn that back again. Stick it in the thing. And so my inner tie rod's got grease and threads, so it'll come back off again easier. You wanna make sure those two are locked in. Sorry about the camera angle. Sorry about that. And push that in. You can actually move the steering a little bit if you have to from here and then put the nut on.
Sorry about that, trying to do the same thing. The only issue we've had so far is the nut that, brand new nut that came here. Obviously it's a brand new nut, nothing laying on the ground. It doesn't fit. So we'll just see if we can get the old one back on and go from there. And then we'll put a cotter pin under there to hold it. We've got it on, we get the little hole lined up. We can put the cotter pin in, it doesn't matter which way the cotter pin goes in the hole. And we just gotta make sure we got enough room in there for it. Can you already see. There it goes. Come through, just bend it out. It's bent out, the grease fitting's on. I'm not gonna grease it because it's got a lot of grease in the factory, so I don't want to mix my nasty grease in with that. Actually I have good grease. And for some reason if you're taking the tie rod out and you don't have that fork, you can hammer this and break it loose this way. If you know 100 percent the tie rod's bad, you can just hammer on the stud. If you hammer on a stud, you're gonna damage it anyways, so then that'll pop it loose too. So you can actually so you just hit there and pop it loose. Okay, hope this helps you and shows you pretty much almost in real time how to take the tie right off. About a 15 minute job. And so the hardest the recommendation is make sure you keep an eye on where the tie right was originally to keep your alignment. Big thing. Thank you for watching.